Christian, and today I'll be showing off my completely 3D printed mechanical calculator that I designed and manufactured. Believe it or not, we didn't always have the phones we have today to solve the various mathematical problems we face throughout our day. Still, humans have been doing math for quite some time, and I would like to briefly discuss the various ways in which people have been going about that. Uh, one of the first ways anyone is taught how to do math is just by counting with their ten fingers. The Babylonians also use their fingers to count, just in a slightly different way than we do today. The way the Babylonians counted was using the three knuckle creases on their four fingers uh, and their thumb as a pointer to count to 12 on one hand. And the way this works is as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Using both hands, you're able to count to 24, which is definitely a huge improvement on only being able to count to 10 using all 10 fingers. Once you become limited by what your body is capable of, you start to take resources from the environment to make mathematical tools. One of the earliest mathematical tools is the abacus, while not as old as the abacus, we have the slide rule, which is an extremely simple device. It only has one or two moving parts and is capable of achieving a lot of the same computational tasks your modern phone is capable of if you know how to use it, which is extremely impressive. Once these simple tools like the slide rule and the abacus become obsolete, that's when you start to see things like the classical mechanical calculator, which is what we have here and it's what I have designed. In my opinion, these calculators are the most beautiful calculators. They're extremely complicated mechanically, but fundamentally operate on the same principles as the slide rule or the abacus. Once uh, technological advancement picked up around the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, we started to see introduction of electrical components into mechanical calculators, producing electromechanical calculators. These uh, electromechanical calculators were fundamentally the same as mechanical calculators, however they incorporated various electronic components such as motors or electrical contact switches to make the mechanical calculator more capable and easy to use. And finally, we have the modern electrical calculator, which is what almost everyone has on their phone in their pocket today. We also have things like the TI-84, which you may have used in high school or college. And these calculators are terrific, they're extremely capable, easy to use for almost anyone of any age. Now that I've gone over a brief history of calculators, talked a little bit about various calculation techniques, I will now show you my calculator. I will then show you this beautiful calculator built in the 1870s in Sweden, and then I will take apart my calculator. So if you're interested in seeing how this works, please stick around. I would like to preface the demonstration of my calculator with the fact that when I designed it, I had no intent of ever making it, meaning I didn't take into account a lot of the considerations one would normally take into account while designing something to be 3D printed such as tolerances. The fact that this works the way it does while it is not perfect is quite amazing in my opinion and I am very happy with it. The calculator is made up of two main parts, the input section and the output section. The calculator works by the user using the slide selector to choose their number of choice. Once their number has been chosen, they crank the input crank one time regardless of which number has been chosen and the number will be displayed on the first digit. If the number on the first digit exceeds nine, the digit is carried over to the second digit and you can continue computing. Right now, the output reads zero, 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 and I have just selected one on the input. So if I crank this one time, it reads now one. If I crank it a second time, it reads two. Now if I switch over to two, I can rotate in the reverse direction and the number goes back to zero. I am now going to try to demonstrate the carry mechanism. However, there is too much friction in the system for it to work consistently well. Alone in isolation, the carry mechanism works perfectly. However, when the whole device is assembled, there is too much friction for it to work. The carry mechanism is home of the most amount of gears as well as the smallest gears, so it's bound to be where most of the problems occur. Regardless, I'm going to attempt to demonstrate the carry mechanism, uh, so let's see how that works. So right now I've selected five on the input and I'm just gonna crank it a bunch of times. So as you can see, it does work, just not all the time. Strangely, the issues seem to be happening when it's transitioning from zero, zero to zero, one, it skips that. 
but when it goes from zero zero to two zero, it works perfectly fine. And then as well from three zero and four zero, I'm really not exactly sure what's going on here. It's possible that there is some issue I'm missing like with one tooth on one gear and I just haven't put in the time to find the exact issue. However, uh, I don't intend on doing much further investigation. Uh, the issues are in intermittent. They're worse sometimes better than others. Uh, but overall, the system works. As promised, I'm gonna show off this beautiful mechanical calculator built in the 1870s in Sweden. This calculator still works even after its long life. It actually has a lot of features my calculator lacks, such as a output reset, which basically resets the output values to zero, as well as a crank counter, which allows you to keep track of how many times you've cranked the input handle. It also has a larger number of input and output values uh, as well as place carriers. So mid calculation, you're actually able to shift places, which helps uh, with some more complicated calculations. This calculator is absolutely beautiful. I had the pleasure of obtaining it and actually taking it apart and restoring it, which was just an, an, an amazing opportunity just to get inside of this beautiful machine, see its intricacies and how it works. Uh, I definitely have a lot of work to do if this is what I'm looking to aim for. And my little blue calculator is definitely far away from, from uh, ever com being compared to this beauty, but uh, I'm happy with my calculator. If you're interested in seeing what's inside of this calculator, I'm going to disassemble and then reassemble the entire thing. I'm not going to talk at all during this process because if I were to explain what every single part did and how they work together, we would be here for a few hours. However, if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. I love getting comments from you all. It's really enjoyable to see everyone engaged and to be able to talk to you all. Uh, before I disassemble it, I'd just like to mention that this whole thing is held together by friction. There are no screws, there's no glue, so it's very easy to assemble and disassemble. making this calculator through the design process, the manufacturing process, and the troubleshooting process. And while I had fun at times, it was extremely frustrating. In fact, there was a point where I didn't even think this calculator would work. And for what it is, a completely plastic 3D printed mechanical calculator, I'm extremely proud with what I've come up with. Even though it doesn't work perfectly, it does have a lot of the features and technical capabilities of a real mechanical calculator. And I know for a fact that if in the future I wanted to go and design another mechanical calculator, I would have skills and knowledge that I got from this project to make a better mechanical calculator, possibly with some of the features this very nice one has. I am considering in the future attempting to make a casted 
mechanical calculator out of aluminum, whether that be completely glass, cast in completely metal or mixed between plastic parts and metal parts, I don't know. I have not started yet. And if that's something you're interested, please let me know down below. However, I had a lot of fun making this. I hope you've enjoyed this video, found it interesting, possibly learned something new. And I hope you have a great day. This is Levi Sheeran. Thank you for watching.